Welcome to 11.9, and this is our last video for last section of this chapter, last video of this chapter, last video of this uh, quarter, last video of this semester, last video of geometry. Woohoo! I'm, I'm more excited than you are. <laughs> so 11.9. We are exploring similar solids. We are familiar with similarity. We've looked at uh, similar triangles, similar polygons, and now we're looking at similar solids, which means uh, three-dimensional objects. Okay, so let's review this. <clears throat> um, let's th first think about uh, congruent. When we had uh, two shapes that were congruent, remember our little saying was the same shape, same size. With similar uh, shapes though, similar uh, figures, similar triangles, what we said was same shape, proportional size, proportional size. So when we say same shape, we are saying that, saying that the corresponding angles are congruent. And when we are saying proportional size, we're saying that it's proportional, I'm sorry, it's corresponding lengths have the same ratio. Corresponding lengths have the same ratios. So those principles that we use with two-dimensional figures, we can also use with solids, these three-dimensional figures. And so let's look at just, uh, uh, for example, this uh, these two circles. Right? Ignore that these are cones, but uh, let's just look at these two circles. And these two circles are similar and they have a particular scale factor scale factor so remember scale factor was old over new or was it new over old i think it was new over old there's uh, scale factor was new over old when we were doing for example the um, dilations so new over old if the new one is uh, bigger that's a enlargement and so that would be a, a scale factor that would be greater than one because the new is greater than uh, the old. So with a <clears throat> um, with solids, three-dimensional figures, it's the same same concept. So let's take an example <clears throat> here in your textbook, and let's see whether these solids are similar and so how do we determine whether or not these solids are similar well first thing we have to do is put them in the same orientation put them in what appears to be the same orientation so it looks like the smallest edge this is on the left hand side longest edge will be on on the bottom and uh, and so forth okay so what we need to do is, as we said, that if they are similar, then, yes, they're similar, then the uh, corresponding angles are congruent and the corresponding lengths have the same ratio. So looks like all of these guys are rectangular prisms, so all the corresponding angles between all three of these are congruent. Let's look now at corresponding lengths. So these two sides correspond. I see what they're doing here is, which one are they doing first? I think these guys, yeah. So these two uh, are corresponding lengths. So the ratio of these lengths uh, going one over two. So one over two is uh, four over eight. So that would give us a scale factor of one half if we were going from one, no, if we were going, actually new over old, if we were going from uh, two to one, okay, it would be a scale factor of one half if we were to reduce this using these corresponding signs. Let's look at the widths because uh, just because I can create a ratio does not mean that these two figures, these two solids are similar. It has to be where all of the corresponding uh, sides have the same ratio. So let's compare the widths. Looking at the widths, 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 which one of these? I guess these guys? They're calling, no, 
these you know, there. That makes more sense. Uh, these widths. So if I have a two and four, put that two over four. If I was to reduce that, it would re reduce down to uh, one half. So so far, it looks as if these two solids are similar with each other. But I also need to do the height. So each dimension, we have to confirm that each dimension uh, has the same ratio. And so let's do the heights now. And we see that both of the heights, each of the heights on these two solids are two, two over two. Reduce that down to one. <clears throat> so wait a second, that is a different ratio. And so therefore, these two solids are not similar to each other. Okay, so uh, because this is a, these are three-dimensional objects, therefore they're going to have three dimensions, and I need to check each of those three dimensions to ensure that they have the same ratio. So let me have you do the same thing between uh, these two uh, solids, and you tell me, you calculate whether or not they have the same ratio between corresponding lengths, or corresponding sizes. So <clears throat> uh, let me call these this uh, dimension the length of, and first of all, these two are in the same corresponding position, orientation, and let's call this these lengths here, the, the lengths, the lengths <laughs> of them, and then let's call these the widths, and let's call these the heights. <clears throat> And so, uh, let's do. make sure to do 1 over 2. Notice I have a subscript of 1 over 2 with uh, each of these, length, width, and height. And so, determine, go ahead and plug in the numbers for length 1, that'd be 12, would go here, over length 2, which is 9, so 12 over 9, and then reduce that down and give me the most reduced fraction. And then do the same thing with the, the width dimension. And so make sure to do one W1, it should be equal here, W1 uh, over W2, make sure it's the same orientation over the ratio, and then reduce that, see what fraction you get, and then do the same thing for the heights. And if it is the same fraction, the same ratio, for each of these um, dimensions, then, and only then, are these two solids similar to each other. So go ahead and pause the video and calculate whether or not these two solids are similar to each other. <clears throat> now if they are similar to each other, let me show you what we are able to do. If they are similar to each other, <clears throat> as they tell us that these two cans, yep, they are telling us that these two cans are similar. They are similar solids. And they are telling us that this uh, can on the left hand side, the surface area is that number, inches squared, and the volume is 28.27 inches cubed. So let me just emphasize again that whenever you see a square, you should be, or a distance squared, you should be thinking, hey, that's going to be a surface area. And anytime that you see a length cubed, you should be thinking, hey, that is a volume. And so they are also telling us that the scale factor between these two cans is 87 to uh, 100. Or in other words, you could say the scale factor is 87 over 100. Okay, so uh, this is your scale factor between uh, these two cans going from, uh, well, the, on the top is uh, 1 and on the bottom is uh, 2. Okay, so they, what they want us to find is the surface area and the volume of this other large can of peaches. So what we do, oh wait, wait a second, before I explain that to you, let me go back over here, sorry, uh, to your notes, and to tell you that the scale factor is the ratio of the lengths, okay, the ratio of lengths, that's what we just uh, ca calculated here. 
But when you have the ratio of the areas, because remember, to get area, we need to do a length times a length. So therefore, the ratio of the areas is not k, it's not just the scale factor, it is k squared. So the ratio of the areas of two similar uh, solids will be k, that is the scale factor, squared. And the ratio of the volumes will be the scale factor cubed because in order to find volume, you will remember that you have to take three different uh, lengths and multiply them times each other. For example, if I had feet for the, the length, it'd be feet times feet times feet, which is feet cubed. So the ratio of the vol volumes is the scale factor cubed. So now we're ready <coughs> to do this problem where they're asking us for the surface area. Let's start out with that surface area of this larger can of peaches. So we set up our proportion. Remember we said that with uh, similar solids they have the same shape and proportional sizes. And so surface area uh, I do surface area of can 1 over surface area of can 2 and that's going to equal this ratio, this uh, scale factor, 87 over 100, but that number, because we're doing areas, that number needs to be squared. So in other words, it'd be 87 over 100 squared. Okay, that is a uh, the, the, I guess you could say area scale factor, but all we do is just we say scale factor squared when we're talking about area. And so you plug in what you know, the 51.84 into the surface area one, and now you have this proportion, and see how I distributed this uh, exponent of two into the parentheses, so it became 87 squared over 100 squared, and now I have a proportion. And I can solve this proportion for the surface area of 2 by cross multiplying, probably would be the easiest way. Cross multiply uh, both sides and then divide both sides by 87 squared in order to get the surface area of can 2. And then when you round it, you'll get approximately uh, 68.49. Now to do the same concept, but now uh, with the volume, uh, we can do the ratio of the volumes, but remember, that's not equal to the scale factor. Scale factor, like we said, is equal to the ratio of the lengths. The ratio of the areas is scale factor squared, and the ratio of the volumes is scale factor cubed. So let's do that. Let's do the ratio of the volumes uh, here, and that's equal to the scale factor cubed. So again, that would be 87 over 100 cubed. Then plug in what you do know. You know the volume of the first can is 28.27 and we were looking for the volume of the second can. And again distribute this exponent inside the parentheses here because this is they're separated by division we can do that. So 87 cubed over uh, 100 cubed and then cross multiply this guy and you can solve for the volume. See how that works? So those are the kind of problems that we will be doing later in class. But for your purposes, my purposes with you right now, what I'd like you to do is take these two <coughs> uh, solids and calculate, first of all, calculate the scale factor. And we can do that by the ratio of the lengths like we did before, or we can do it by calculating the ratio of the circumferences. Because the circumference is a length, therefore it should have the same scale factor. So you'll remember that uh, circumference equals 2 pi r. So figure out for me the uh, circumference of this, oops, I forgot to label these guys, let's label this guy as can 1, or cylinder, oops, 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 what am I doing? and this is cylinder 2. Okay, so this is cylinder one, and this is cylinder two. So this uh, here does not mean uh, cylinder or can one. It means circumference, 
of cylinder one. So calculate the circumference of cylinder one by using this equation. So plug in your radius of 12 centimeters into here and uh, figure out the circumference of um, cylinder one. And then do the same thing with cylinder two, figure out the circumference for that guy. And then give me the ratio of the circumference of one over the circumference of two, and then reduce that, you know, divide those numbers, and then get me a, probably end up being a decimal number. So it probably, it may be a uh, uh, inequality, not inequality, um, approximates, approximation uh, that you have here, two squiggly lines. So you tell me whether or not it's a, a decimal. Okay, so that will be your scale factor for these two solids. And then I'd like for you to, to what I'd like you to do is to calculate the surface area of each of these two cylinders. So let's remind ourselves how to do surface area. And then we're going to compare the ratio of the surface areas. Okay, so let's first remind ourselves how to do surface area. This is a cylinder. Yeah, it's a cylinder. So remember our net is going to look like you we'll always start out with a rectangle. We have two bases on this guy. So put your two base, the shape of those two bases, uh, each of those two bases is a circle. So put your two circles there. And and then uh, plug in uh, right in here uh, the, the radius of your uh, circle and also the height of your cylinder. And remember that because this is a cylinder which has two bases, the surface area of a cylinder is the lateral area plus two times the big base. And this lateral area, this uh, rectangle here, uh, is this length of the rectangle is the same as the circumference around the circle. Circumference of a circle is two pi r. And the height of this rectangle is the height of your cylinder, so times h. And then plus two times, and remember big base is the area of the big base. Uh, the shape of the big base is a circle. The equation for the area of a circle is pi r squared. So two times pi r squared, because there's two of these big bases here. So plug in your radius, your height, and your radius, and get me a number for the surface area of this uh, first uh, cylinder and then do the same thing for the surface area of the second cylinder and then uh, give me the ratio of those uh, two surface areas and uh, put your numbers there and then uh, divide that to find the uh, simplified number and then see if that is the same thing as um, the scale factor squared in other words take the square root of this number and see if that's the same as the uh, scale factor that you calculated. Or take your scale factor and then square it and see if that's the same as the ratio of your surface area. So I want you to see this uh, for yourself, uh, that it really does, it does work. So go ahead and pause the video and do that. And then now I'd like for you to do the same type of idea uh, with the volumes. So let's find the volumes of each of these cylinders. Remember the equation for the volume of a cylinder and also for the volume of a prism is uh, volume equals big base times height. And the shape of the big base in the case of a cylinder is a circle. So the area equation for the area of a circle is pi r squared times h, the height of your uh, cylinder. So plug in your numbers for the radius and the height into this uh, volume equation to find the volume of cylinder number one. And then do the same thing for cylinder number two. And then give me the ratio of those two volumes and simplify it to give me a number here. And then see if that is indeed the same number as the scale factor cubed. So take the scale factor and cube it. Remember how to how to do that on your calculator uh, with the exponent.